My guests today are Abe Bueno Delad and George H. Xanthus, who are on the hit series The Chosen. In today's episode, we talk about The Chosen's fourth season story arc, as well as the character development of James and John. Welcome to Lifeology. Hey, thanks for having us. Thank you. That was a tongue twister for me. <laughs> <laughs> said it four times. <laughs> Got it right the last time. All right, you guys have done so many things. Uh, I've, like I said, I heard you were on a previous uh, radio show just now, so I need to go back to back. You guys are professionals, so thanks for being on the show today. No problem. Thanks Pleasure. for having us. Yeah. So you both play the characters um, James and John, who are the sons of Zebedee. So yeah. I want to talk about that in just a second. But before we do, many people may not know about The Chosen. Tell us about the, the TV series The Chosen. What, what's it about? So The Chosen is the first multi-season episodic show about the life of Jesus through the eyes of the disciples. And um, we are on season four, incredibly enough, uh, thanks to a very hard push from the original fans who crowdfunded this and made the first season the most crowdfunded project in history. Uh, yeah. And I actually joined during season two. Uh, George is an original, but I auditioned for season one uh, and my time didn't come till season two. Mm. What character do you, which one do you audition for? Sorry, my name is Abe Bueno Jalad and I play Big James. Uh, I've been playing Big James since season two and I'm one of the brother thunders along, brothers of thunder along with my uh, good brother broheem in real life george h xanthus <laughs> uh, who did you audition for abe did you do the same as all yeah, of what us was, you did you do? was it for, yeah no no it was uh simon peter thomas uh simon the zealot and then uh never auditioned for james i just got it <laughs> they just Mate, they it. put you through the <laughs> ringer they, put, they pushed me they definitely like put me, through the, <laughs> put me through the machine so, you know what's, what's what's great about this is if this is only audio i'm not sure what it is but you can it's clearly tell the aussie one is uh is george <laughs> so i'm george i play john uh, I, I actually I auditioned for simon peter as well because the the first line of of john the apostle is uh, and I'll, I'll perform it for you. This is free. Go get yeah. caught in a net. Go <laughs> get caught in a net. That is the only thing that John says. It's like in a, it's like in Jabba the Hutt's appearance in A New Hope. It's very brief, and you don't even notice he's there. And you're like it's Jabba. Um, John is not Jabba, but anyway, yeah, there'll scenario. be more Star Wars references, by the way. <laughs> I'll try to slip them in as much as possible. <laughs> um, one thing you said, though, as far as it's a crowdfunded um, multi-episodic, multi-season um, show, that's what I thought was really interesting because I had the pleasure of interview interviewing Daryl Evans, who's a co-executive producer uh, for the show, a couple months yeah. ago. And he was talking about it being a seven-season seri seven series run, which I've never yeah. heard of. You know, I've heard of the shows being you know a couple, couple episodes here and there, or a mini-series, but to have it be that long, how in the world are they able to ex expand it to that many you know seasons? What? I honestly think that the, the 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 original source, the Bible, is so expansive that even That's with right. even with seven series, you're just missing out. It's just honestly, yeah. it, it's a really big story and it's very complex. And to be honest, even with the time that we've had, there are certain things that just get condensed. Um, mm. So if it, ideally, you know, most show, but these were the the parameters that were set because we were so small. So most shows that were below nine were considered mini series, right? Anything mm, from nine right. to 13, nine to 22 is kind of has like more episodes, yeah. uh, episodic, what you mm -hmm. see regular, like regular orders. Yeah. So um, we were, we used the constraints in a creative way and did less episodes spread out across more seasons. Oh, I and I think that there's like a, there's just a component of, 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 that's still dealing with the financial constraints that we've always had from the beginning, mm -hmm. from it being nothing project to now. So uh, we're sticking yeah. with this model and I like it. It's kind of quick. It doesn't, you don't get on with it. Like you can, you can binge eight pretty quickly, you know? Yeah. It reminds me of a lot of the, um, the British, the British series where they have, you know, like I'm thinking of the Sherlock Holmes was the one that they did with um, Benedict Cumberbatch. And there was, there would be like one season, but it was like maybe four episodes, but it was extended out for so long. That you're like, Oh my gosh. And so you really wanted to watch it as much as possible. And so you're excited about it as it, as it was, um, as it was aired. Now for the two of you though, what drew you to the show, this, the chosen in the first place? Well, for, for me coming on right from the start, I, I definitely 
loved the first script. You know, I was going for Simon Peter and I wasn't yeah. aware that they had already cast him <laughs> at that stage, <laughs> which is news to me. At the, it was, uh, Dallas told me, it was like, oh, we had already cast Shahar. So, and I'm like, oh, what was I auditioning for? But it was, it was basically to get an, to get an idea of who you are. Because like I said, John has one line in the opening three episodes. Uh, so you can't really, it's like, go get caught in the net. It's like, yeah, it's like, so they just, they get you just to say a little bit more, but I was following the story through the eyes of Simon, which is basically, uh, you know, it's an analogy uh, of the entire series. Mm -hmm. It's the life of Jesus through the eyes of mm -hmm. those who knew him best. So you're yeah. getting this outside in view, uh, you know, kind of thing rather than the inside out focusing purely on Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're focusing on all these people. And that's when I kind of knew that it would be, a, a big hit uh, that mm -hmm. first episode i love i loved reading that first episode because the story is that the, there are there's an oppressed people there is a, a fisherman who's down on his luck and he owes all these taxes to the roman government and he doesn't know how to get them so he's considering selling out his own people to mm. settle his own tax score with the oh, romans wow. and that to me as a, as a as a student of history i studied it at college and also um at school uh, that spoke to me a lot. This is a different way of viewing this, you know, story that everybody yeah. knows so well. Sure. So um, that attracted me. Also, I am an actor and it is a professional job. So I just got an audition for of it course. and I went in and, you know, <laughs> so it, it, you, you, you go in for auditions because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you want to work, but it made it that much more special. The fact that the, the script yeah. and the story was so, um, yeah, so enticing. Yeah. What about you? Yeah, I would say, that it, you know, you never know what job you're going to get as an actor, right? It's mm -hmm. just things coming by and you kind of take a stab at anything uh, just because the odds are so low. But every now and then something sticks out and and it, whether and you, you hope you're like, oh, my God, this is going to be such a good project. It gets canceled. Even those big studios, you read it and you're like, oh, my God, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, and it just yeah. doesn't gain traction. So this was one of those things that when it came by my desk, I was like, wow, the writing is poignant. The circumstances mm -hmm. are compelling for Simon Z. Uh, this would be awesome. Simon I hope Peter. It, oh, yeah. Sorry. Simon Peter. Um, and I hope that 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 I hope that it makes it right. Yeah. Um, and so I was really close during season one casting and it, I was just like to have that call for like the fourth time with Dallas. I was just like, uh, you know, and then to get the next call during the pandemic, I was like, oh my God, like I can't with this right now. <laughs> so I was a bit reluctant <laughs> after so many, yeah. uh, bridegroom moments, but, uh, uh thankfully yeah. my, my time came. <laughs> I like how the fact, uh, so Dallas is, is one of the, the creator and, the, and the, one of the writers, the main writer as well. I like how they, um, they put a different spin in it. I believe it was, is it Matthew that has more yeah. of a neurotypical type of, um, a spectrum like quality about him. The divergent, yeah. yeah. Neurodivergent yeah. quality about him. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the other, that's the other, um, you know, the, lo the log line of a series is, you know, often mm -hmm. the down yeah. and out fisherman trying to pay yeah. his taxes. But if you want the extended log line, there's also who does he pay his taxes to? Well, there's a knock mm. at his door and yeah. it's, uh, it's a fellow it's Jew and he's working for the Roman government. So uh, we explored the reasons as to why someone might, you know, it, it's it, he basically, it's um, He's good with numbers and whatnot, but he also doesn't mm -hmm. take the social cues. So it was just a little bit by deducing what we know from the Bible. His his book is very detailed, and you can often compare him to John. John's sure. is very obsessed with Jesus, and it's very mm -hmm. like uh, creative. It's very poetic. Um, and then Matthew's mm -hmm. is very like me and Paris. Often Paris, who plays Matthew in the series, will often compare uh, the accounts of John versus Matthew. Oh, yeah. There's there's a scene where uh, where uh, the Pharisees are talking, and John mentions the Pharisees come in and then Matthew's got like a paragraph <laughs> about what they said. So it kind of like, yeah, maybe he had an attention to maybe he had yeah. an attention to detail. And so we're kind of, you know, it's huh. it's a creative license. We don't yeah. know if Matthew was like yeah, that. But yes, Matthew is on the spectrum, uh, I, I yeah. think we, we say possibly autistic. And so yeah. he's very good with details, but uh, social cues he doesn't really take. So he, he didn't understand working for the Roman government was a bad mm. thing. He was just like, sure. oh, I need money and this is a way to get mm -hmm. money. So uh, yeah. that's, the, yeah, it's a, a very really, popular character, by the way. So what I thought was really cool though, because what you were saying as far as with him being more, maybe on the spectrum is, because if I remember correctly in the book of Matthew, it starts out with the lineage 
of who yep. begot who and whose son was who, and it just goes on forever. And so, I mean, that would make sense, you know, that what you're saying as well, that he's very, very focused on the, the, the data, I suppose, as opposed to the emotional yeah. interactions with others. And, so, and you can deduce from, very quickly, you can deduce from John's book, he goes, he's yeah. speaking, in, he's, he writes in ancient Greek, and he's got very, very poetic and very, very old mm -hmm. uh, kind of, uh, um, I guess, uh, analysis of how the, mm -hmm. like, he's focused on this is where, this is yeah. the genesis of God, and Matthew's going, this is, well, this is his genealogy, whereas, you know, with John, we can probably deduce that he was quite uh, well-educated. James and John lived with their parents, which means that they were maybe mummy and daddy's boys, maybe they were a little <laughs> bit wealthier, but they were, they, they were good with their hands, so you can deduce a yeah. lot from the books. Yeah, oh, that's really clever. Yes. I never, I never really thought about that, but that's 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 really yeah. quite quite well. So we're now in the fourth season of the Chosen, and so catch us up. What's happening in the fourth season, or give us some um, some little teasers about that. Well, during the fourth season, um, we're we're beginning to see how the ministry of Jesus has grown. His sermons, you know, have gotten renowned everywhere, not to mention the miracles that he's performing. So with with these actions alone, not only has it created great traction for, for his movement, for his ministry, but at the same time, it's bringing a bunch of people to his hometown, to different parts of, of the holy cities. And it's yeah. It's really drawing the negative, unfortunate attention of the Roman Empire. And it's also it's also creating some tensions within the 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 within the the, the, the kingdom of Jerusalem itself. So mm -hmm. this season we we enjoyed how the ministry grew, but now we're trying to now we're going to see the repercussions of that. And there's also going to be moments of levity, moments of growth, but everybody is going to be pressed. And there's going to be some new characters that people might know or not expect. So uh, it's going to be a good one. Yeah, that's that's interesting. For the two of you, so you're known as the Sons of Thunder. Tell us what that means. Well, I, I may have gone, you know, a little bit through John's character about how these two are, you know, maybe mummy and daddy's boys. They're kind of, they live with their parents. They're very educated. They're good fishermen. They're very good at everything that they do. Um, but uh, another part of their characters is, is that they, they're, they're almost like the, have you ever seen the Mighty Ducks, the Bash Brothers? They're always mm -hmm. kind of, <laughs> these guys, these James and John kind of do everything together and they're very protective. So I think that they, they get their name because they're so full of zeal and they're so full mm. of ambition. And I think uh, there is a moment in, in the Bible when uh, they're all, they're going into Samaria and Jesus is attacked by Samaritans and um, James and John just want to protect Jesus at all costs. Mm -hmm. And I think a, a lesson from Jesus is, no, 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 not at all costs. You know, there has to be room for righteousness, as he says. So James and John get their name because they're so, uh, they're so eager to please. And sometimes their actions, their body moves before their mind does. And so Jesus is trying to work. So you can imagine if you can see me on screen, like one hand is to the right and yeah. one hand is to the left. By the way, they end up asking for those two positions later on. <laughs> what, no Jesus is trying to realign those hands to come together. If yeah, you can imagine yeah. the hands of a prayer, <laughs> if yeah. you get those yeah. two hands that together. So, um, yeah, just trying to align the body with the mind, the, the body kind of moves before the mind a little bit with them. Mm -hmm. So he says, you are sons of thunder. You need to uh, calm down a little bit, channel those emotions for righteousness. I love the passion guys, but you just need to calm it down a little bit. So that's how they get their name. It's because they, uh, they often, uh, yeah, they often uh, act before they think. Hmm. Often. Another question I have for the two of you is what, with your characters that you play, what's similar and what's dissimilar about the characters for you in your, regarding your, your own personal We're, we're brothers. And so uh, we're, we're very well read. You know, we, we know the, the Old Testament, you know, the, 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 the books of the Old hey, Testament. Can I, can I say that we also finish each other's sentences? No. <laughs> and we also finish each other's food. Nice. Meals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's funny. But yeah, well read in the Old Testament. <laughs> uh, well read in the Old Testament. Um, and so we come up together, 
even in the seasons, if people could go back and watch season two, a lot of the lessons that we learn or are struggling with, we use each other to bounce ideas off. And I find their mm -hmm. relationship to both be one of doubts, yeah. but like also in that, as George was saying, like the book of John has this classic symposium thing about taking in things in a more circular manner, which is also mm -hmm. part of like Jewish tradition in a way to question things. Um, so I really feel that you'll see those similarities. And then the differences are that um, each one eventually starts going his own way. Like, like all brothers, you know, eventually you have to go and start your own thing. You can't stay mm -hmm. back to back forever, even when you start your own family. So um, yeah. we, we see them diverge on, which direction they're going, but they always come back and mm -hmm. me. So I, I think it's a really beautiful part of the show is our brotherhood and the dynamics that affect it. And, and there's an interesting little analogy that we kind of use also probably probably metaphor is that um, in, in this season to a little bit of a spoiler, but it's uh, it, everybody knows it because we kind of covered it on our socials and with the chosen page. But James and John in season four asked to sit at the left and right hand of Jesus. And, um, you know, uh, they often compare it to. You know, it's 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 in response to one of their fellow disciples getting given a new title. And so they want a yeah. new title, even though they got Sons of Thunder, they weren't happy with it. <laughs> so they said, maybe we can be the parapets, which are the two yeah. flags on top of his ministry. Yeah. So they're imagining castles and kingdoms and stuff. Yeah. But if you think about that, the parapets are, you know, if you think about the first disciple martyred is James, the last mm -hmm. disciple to, to die is John. So they mm, always are true. these two disciples that kind of, mm flank uh so everything they do is together but uh they're also there is this there is this uh uh kind of push and pull and this dovetailing between the two we often find so early on uh, you know a little bit of peek behind the curtain nerdy actor talk i would ask dallas permission but i would give Abe, some of, you know, if I had a line, I would give him half of the line so that we could be mm. a bit more brotherly in that yeah. it would be like, you know, we have to get dates. And he would say uh, almonds <laughs> or something yeah. like that. And then <laughs> instead oh, of me listing, it. yeah, it instead dates. of me listing oh. a almonds, yeah. So instead of me listing a whole bunch of things, it's like these two brothers that keep finishing sure. each other's sentences. And sure. uh, they're very similar in that regard. But we also found that in our dialogue, John was more instinctive with the feel. And that's probably where we see, you know, where John ends up in his position in the disciples, in the ministry. He mm -hmm. lives the longest. He kind of oversees like the eagle, you know, we're talking about mm -hmm. the, the concept of John. I don't know if I talked about that in another interview, but, um, you know, John is this overseer of the disciples later yeah. on in Book of Acts. But, um, yeah. John has that instinct, that feeling. He's often called the disciple of love. But James in the series has that mind. He knows it in his head. And so John is the feeling. James is the head. And so but together mm, they make this one super being. Uh, yeah. But separately they kind of understand different aspects of Jesus' teachings. Hmm. Well said, well said. When – since this is your fourth season playing these character for you individually what have you learned about yourself through the through playing these characters for me as kind of every season you come out with a little bit of a different perspective so season two uh i think it was clear to me how much abundance we have in our life that we don't mm -hmm. take advantage of not take advantage of but like just recognize yeah. and, and gratitude so like abundance and gratitude was season two for me season three was just like the the impact and awe to to understand what it is to witness uh jesus doing all that he's doing mm -hmm. and also his focus right like he he i think at one point he says like you know i'm people are people are receiving his ministry i'm not even promoting i'm not even like doing miracles the fact that to him the yeah. words were the most impactful not even the actions uh, people are listening to my words. Uh, that was like, wow, I'd never heard it from that. Because oftentimes it is more about our actions than our words. But the words that he was saying were transforming people's interior, allowing them to feel and see, be seen in ways that they had never known. And then for the fourth season, I think the thing is how the lesson that I took away was how our strengths can also become our downfalls if we're not listening with That's an open heart. Sure. Yeah, that's fair. I like that. 
Yeah. And I would say very quickly with James and John, I think they're, they're really great disciples uh, for the audiences to relate to because uh, I think the lessons, I think the show uses James and John more than any of the disciples to teach a lesson uh, separating ego from righteousness, let's just say, mm -hmm. and uh, the greater good and, you know, living with compassion and empathy and cooperation with one another. James and John will often think of themselves, and that's where Jesus has to rebuke them and say, remember what yeah. we said about, you know, sharing and being together. And, uh, you know, that's kind of, I think the fact that James and John get taught that lesson in season two when they are named Sons of Thunder and then they learn from it and then they fall back into the same trap in season four when mm. they ask to sit at the left and right hand, I think it's not only... Um, education for myself as a person uh, or both of us as people but it's it's there for the audience to remind them all of us even the disciples who were considered yeah. so holy they fell into that same trap of you know oh i made that same mistake don't worry if you make the mistake you can always come back and uh, ask for forgiveness as james and john do so they're great disciples for the audience to kind of live alongside because yeah. uh they'll often make a mistake and uh you can always come back from that and center yourself so that you can take the next challenge with a clear mind yeah it's interesting so you both auditioned for different characters and now you're in these you're playing the characters you're playing today so it sounds like it was well casted in the, at, the, at the end of the day 100 <laughs> percent yeah, the casting works out the way, like in, in crazy ways, more than just somebody pointing a finger and saying, that one, right? It, mm -hmm. it, it, it takes all sorts of life. Yeah. Now, a lot of people who may be listening right now be like, well, I'm not religious. I don't really know anything about Jesus or want to know anything about Jesus in general. What would you say to that? And how does it chosen, how does it kind of open, maybe expand people's mindset? I think that's totally fine. I mean, there's, you know, people don't also believe in like, marble characters being real or you know like there's so many there's so many sure. things that we consume that we don't really have a relationship with um yeah. but but we all really have a historical relationship with this project because it sort yeah, of set sure. in motion a lot of the things for western civilization uh including you know religion including the conflicts that came out of it and the countries really that came out of it if you want to look at the greater historical the um, calendar the calendar <laughs> yeah. you know it's so literally there's, 2024 um, for a reason <laughs> i think that it has historical resonance w without yeah. without necessarily being a uh, a, a purely uh spiritual thing that's only accessible to people that follow their faith i, I really don't mm -hmm. think actually my burden is probably for those people that like are just coming to it with no experience with no with no idea about what this was and and what happened in this part of the world yeah yeah that's great and i you know also we think about uh, we're now in a world of influencers and we think about i mean jesus was clearly the greatest influencer of all time yeah. i mean years later we're still talking about him so and that's quite a lesson for all of us as well as you know our legacy regardless of where we are in life we always have a legacy and so thankfully yeah jesus his legacy continues to grow on and so i'm really appreciative of you guys being on my show today so uh, unfortunately our time is up if my viewers and listeners want to find out more information about you a winner a lot and george h xanthus where they find all this information online as well as the chosen well, you can follow me on Instagram. That's honestly where I do most of my socializing, digital socializing. Um, and don't forget to check up the don't forget to check out thechosenriseup.com for the uh, new season four re-releasings during Holy Week and beyond. George? Yeah, and I mean, the best place to see me definitely is on the big screen, I would argue, uh, to see me and Abe. Uh, we're re-releasing re season four. Uh, there's going to be lots of kind of like discounts and kind of offerings there. So if people want to see it on the big screen, there's more time to do that. Uh, episodes one to three are on Thursday, March 28. And from there, the rest of the episodes will start to get released. So that's March 28. We're going to be starting that re-release during Holy Week. And uh, yeah, that's the best place to see us, I would say. Awesome. Well, my viewers and listeners also know that this show is syndicated on many platforms for many years to come. So whenever you watch this, simply go to thechosen.com, I believe it is, and you can find out all the information of where it will continue to be played, as well as to go to my website, jamesmillerlifeology.com forward slash the chosen. And I'll have the interview with these two gentlemen here, as well as the original interview I did with Daryl Evans, who's a co-executive producer of the chosen. Thank you both so much for your time. I really appreciate it. It was nice to, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, James. Take care. Thank you.